This is a long-awaited sequel to a video series I made forever ago. Now, do note that in this series, I am not making fun of video games, but rather addressing the very true fact that some people do take away misconceptions from them. Grab the popcorn and listen and give all ears as I tell you five gamer misconceptions about cars. So the first thing we'll talk about is cars constantly exploding when they flip over. Now the reason games do this is due to convenience. It's really awkward when you're flipped over in a video game because you kind of are just stuck like that. Some developers make it where you can wiggle your wheels and flip back over. Some of them make it where you can hold down a button and you'll teleport back. And it just looks kind of goofy. So uh, most modern developers and most games kind of solve that by just thinking, why not just make the car explode? Because if the car explodes, it forces you to respawn and use your like previous save because you obviously died. And since video games, you have multiple lives unlike real life, that's the easier solution that actually comes off as less immersion breaking, but also more convenience. Because if you're in the middle of a race, especially in a game like Grand Theft Auto V, if you flip over, it's a really awkward situation. Sometimes you don't explode in Grand Theft Auto V, and when that happens, it's hard to flip over and then reverse the car and then try to line it back up and then get in the correct direction again to where you need to go. It takes way too much time when you can just explode it and just spawn back flipped correctly. Now in real life, it's really rare that cars explode when they flip over, and you can see this happen a lot with off-road racing, like trophy trucks, monster trucks, and so on and so forth. When they flip over, or even roll over multiple times, they usually won't explode. This also is true of most civilian cars. Now if they roll over enough, or if they hit a surface hard enough, or they hit a flammable object, they're probably going to explode. The reason most of them don't, though, is because most automotive manufacturers have gotten smarter over their years and have made many designs properly safe for the general public. They are designed with the consideration of surviving a few rollovers, and the gasoline tank's position as well as the fuel lines are designed relative to the car's possibility of it flipping over so it doesn't immediately explode if it hits like the smallest thing. That's just something to keep in mind for all the people who are like, is this really what happens in real life? It's not. Now the second entry is something, as well as the third, they kind of roll in together, and this is something that a lot of non-car people and a lot of gamers do mix up. So we're going to talk about Turbo Boost. Turbo Boost is not the same as Nitrous Boost. It is not at all the same as how Nitrous functions. A turbocharger is indeed a boost system. It is a forced induction system more specifically, just like a supercharger is, but we're not going to get too complicated because most video games do not talk about superchargers. They only talk about turbochargers, which makes me, a real-life supercharger owner, rather sad. But back to the topic of turbos. Most turbos will have lag, so they take a while to spool up. Because they take a while to spool up, the boost doesn't kick in until later, so you can literally mash the pedal down on a car in real life, and it won't be a while till you get the boost fully spooling and then you get the boost kicking in feeling where suddenly the car tugs forward, you're thrown back in your seat, and I can see why video game developers and why lots of Hollywood movie directors, when they sat in cars with turbos, they thought someone was like hitting a button and make boost suddenly engaging because it's throwing them back in their seat. So turbochargers are not controlled by a switch, they're not controlled by purging NOS, they're not controlled by pushing a button. It's just a natural forced induction system that's integrated into your exhaust setup, which is directly attached to your engine. For example, you'll have your engine, which then goes into either a manifold or header, which then sits your turbo. Some people even hide their turbos in really sneaky locations all the way back where their muffler is. Some turbos don't even have lag at all. Sequential systems actually have a smaller turbo that spools first, which then wakes up the larger turbo. It's easier to spool a smaller one than a big one. That should be rather obvious for anyone who knows about the concept of spooling and most concepts in life. A good analogy is you can fill a small glass of water faster than you can fill a larger glass of water. So just think of that when you think of small and large turbos. And now that we've gotten rid of the mix-up between Turbo Boost not being Nitrous Boost, let's talk about Nitrous. So this is the third entry. Nitrous Systems, or NOS, does not make car shoot constant flames. So a lot of video games will show cars that when you hit the NOS button, you hit the boost, you boom, flames shoot everywhere. And this is definitely the most important misconception in the video, because this is one that people, many, many people think is true of NOS in real life. And even some people in the car community still think this. So when you engage in NOS or Nitrous or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really create huge, massive flames. In fact, most of the time, it won't even create any flames. 
And NOS also is not some switch or button that you can just do anytime whenever you want. Most NOS systems require a proper purging procedure for you to set up the NOS so you don't blow up your freaking engine in the middle of the race. Now video games don't care about this, they let you NOS out of corners, they let you NOS whenever you want in a straightaway in the middle of driving. You know, 10 laps later when you're super overheated, they still let you push nitrous and it doesn't blow up anything because that's just video games wanting to be fun, I respect that. I like it as a mechanic, I think it's super fun to have a boost system in a game, it keeps you more engaged. It's also a cool management system because it lets you have the ability to kind of save your boost for later on in the race and use it to overtake someone. But in real life, it's not something you do as like a last minute, like, haha, I'm just going to do this to overtake my opponent last second. Let them think they're going to win and that I've been saving it up. It's my final trump card underneath my sleeve. It's not like that, unfortunately, the way NOS actually is. It actually takes a lot of preparation, a lot of thought, and a lot of sacrifice for even think about using it. So that covers that misconception. Now, the shooting flames part, I'll give you guys a proper answer for. So why do I see cars shooting flames? A lot of you are probably wondering how come I see cars in real life shoot flames. I can actually answer this as someone in real life who has a car that shoots flames. You can actually link to that video where I show my car shooting flames. Yes, that's my car. Yeah, I know it's pretty cool. I love it. Anyways, that's besides the point. So most cars with forced induction systems, again, we'll go back to talking about turbochargers. Turbochargers, like I said, have lag. There's another way to get rid of lag called anti-lag. Now, when this anti-lag device is used, because it's dumping all that fuel, the fuel doesn't get burnt in time all in the engine bay. Some of it makes it out to the back where the exhaust is, and it gets ignited there. That is where you see the massive, beautiful flame. That is referred to as a backfire. This is not just unique to anti-lag systems, as superchargers have a different system referred to as two-stepping. So turbochargers have lag, so they need anti-lag. Superchargers don't have lag, so they use two steps. Two-stepping for superchargers, similar to anti-lag. I'm not gonna get super into it this video just because it's too difficult to explain in the short of a time frame for a video for people who don't know much about cars. But in short, two-step is also used as a launch control system by limiting your RPMs. In my specific case for my Ligenfelter two-step that I have in my car, it accomplishes it via spark Cutting. And basically what this does also causes the flame some excess fuel to get poured and ignite in my exhaust instead of in my engine bay. And once again, that results in a huge flame. A lot of cars that have a lot of horsepower that don't even have forced induction can still shoot flames. A Lamborghini Aventador is a good example of this. Usually pour too much fuel and it can't get ignited in time. So some of it makes it back out to the exhaust and ignites there instead. And it makes sense for just a high horsepower vehicle to have that much fuel being pulled, poured into the engine during high acceleration and under load and so on and so forth. Now the fourth misconception we'll talk about is that tires don't wear down in a few laps. So the reason a lot of video games do it, especially older video games like Gran Turismo 2 and 3, is usually due to system limitations. So a lot of the algorithms, like the tire wear algorithms back then, were a lot simpler and a lot of the computational power of those consoles wasn't as intense or capable as modern machines. So it was kind of just coded based on, hey, if he's constantly driving at this speed, taking this turn at this angle after so-and-so laps, tire wears down. That's it. Like, it was a really simple algorithm that results in a lot of tires wearing down within a few laps, and some tires, even like really, really slick tires, losing all of their tread even after like 10 or 20 or so laps. Now, a lot of modern games, this is way less of an issue. You'll see some games allow it where your tires will cool back down in certain instances, but ultimately, they'll still wear down. So like, you'll go several laps and they'll finally wear down and you still need to change them. Understandably, that happens in real life. But it takes it a while because your tires don't just keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. They do have moments of cooling down. This is why a lot of drift places like Lanier Raceplex here in Atlanta, where I'm local to, that I visit all the time, there's actually a back straight there to allow people to cool their tires before they start their next drifting session. And a lot of real life racetracks, that's part of the reason why they also have back straights, is not just for spectators, but also to allow the tires to cool back down before continuing on to the next lap. Now, with a lot of older games, like I said, it was just a uh, just system limitation is why they didn't code that. So it was easier to just code tires that just get worse after each lap without having this cool down mechanic of it healing itself a little bit. So like one of my biggest frustrations as a kid was like having soft tires wear down after like two to three laps, which is totally untrue of how they function in real life. 
And the final gamer misconception about cars, this one is also fairly popular and I see it a lot in the comment sections of us car guys, especially for drag racing videos. A lot of people like to say the phrase, driving in a straight line doesn't need skill, or how do you crash when you drive in a straight line, I just don't get it. So video games sure as heck spoil you about this. This is one where I will get a bit sarcastic about because it's one that does make me angry to see because I know a lot of these car guys work really hard to get their cars to the position that they got it to and just lost it to do one unfortunate time that they weren't ready for it. So we'll actually talk about real life first for this example. The reality of life is with how physics works, especially with tires and relative to power. Power has come really far in these past years. Rubber, not so much. A lot of cars these days, it's really easy to build them to a point where they have far more power than they do have grip. And with rear wheel drive setups especially, if it's a rear wheel drive car that doesn't have any weight in the back, then you're gonna fishtail really easily, even when going in a straight line, because both those wheels are essentially pushing as hard as they can, dragging the front of the car with them. This is part of the reason why Mustangs and Mopars constantly crashing is becoming a meme. Mustangs crashing was always a meme for a while now, but now it's starting to happen more and more with Mopars. Both of those cars have very similar attributes, front engine, more specifically V8s, and their rear wheel drive vehicles, and you're combining all of that with the young buyers that those cars usually attract. For people who play video games, they're probably used to just flooring the throttle and going straight with no problem. When they come to real life, they assume that real life is exactly the same, completely neglecting the fact that a rear wheel drive car with lots of horsepower, with tons of weight in the front but nothing in the back, is actually going to kick its rear out when you just suddenly mash the throttle. And when it kicks the rear out, what actually causes the crash is that it starts to point the car in a different direction than straight, and the person will usually panic and overcorrect, and which will cause the car to either spin out of control or go in the wrong direction and smash somewhere. So while it is easy to point and laugh at them, the reality is a lot of those people probably are some of you watching this video. Some of you could potentially grow up to be those people if you don't convince yourself and mentally educate yourself right now that if you suddenly jab throttle on cars, especially rear wheel drive cars, you're gonna lose control. Having said that, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like cars or gaming, make sure to subscribe and like this video and make sure to watch some of my other videos that I talk about this subject. Other than that, thanks for watching and see y'all next time. Bladed Angel out.